Hello and welcome back to the video, or to the channel rather. Hope you enjoyed the little uh, cinematic intro. I'll try to do something a little bit different that I've not done. And I think it turns out quite well. This habitat turns out really well actually. I wasn't expecting to have this habitat looking this good. I was kind of going for a quite, I don't know, quite barren kind of vibe, but I didn't realize that they were like their sort of tropical um, plants and tropical sort of biomes and stuff. So. I decided to uh, add a little bit more foliage in than I had initially planned. Um, welcome back to the channel, by the way. My name is Slice Mango. I hope you are all doing well and having a great day. Um, if you are new to, to the channel and you do like the video, feel free to drop a like. I do appreciate that. And you can also hit the subscribe button and ring the little bell, which I'm sure you all know about. That way you can stay notified of all the uploads on the channel. This is Project Down Under. This is our little Australian zoo. I'm planning it on doing seven episodes, one every single day for the next week. This is episode two, and this episode we are putting in the Southern Cassowary. I think I said that right. Uh, but these are pretty cool looking birds. I think they're part of the emu family, uh, or the emu tree, I guess. Emu family, emu tree. And <laughs> I think they're such funny looking birds, um, especially when they do that little, I don't know, it's like a little hop to start running sort of thing. It's quite funny. Um, but yeah, I, I really like these birds, actually. I'll, when they uh, showed the DLC and stuff, this wasn't really up there. This is probably the animal that I wasn't fussed about. Um, but having them actually in the game now, being able to play with them and looking at them is amazing. They are, they are such a cool looking bird. I love all the colours on their necks as well. Um, very, very cool. So... We're putting in the barriers here. This is, uh, I guess you could say, like a custom barrier, I guess. Um, just made out of some logs. I wanted to keep it quite sort of simple, quite basic. Um, but also to keep the animals in. And I think it turns out quite well. Uh, I do a little cut there because it's just so boring and monotonous watching me <laughs> play some logs. And you might notice around the edge of the path there as well, I've put in some little, I don't know what you want to call them, little recesses, I guess. Um, and in there, I plan on putting a few education boards at the end of the video as well. Uh, well, you would have seen them at the beginning in the cinematics. Um, but yeah, really quite happy with this and how it turns out. We've got a few little enrichment items in there and the general terrain sorted. I always try and do the terrain before I put the barrier in because the barrier doesn't always let you um, edit the terrain right next to it. So always try and do the barrier first. Um, the, ter the terrain first, rather, not the barrier. Um, and I had a big problem with the welfare of these animals. The, um, the cassowaries liked it sort of between, I think it's between 12 and 40 degrees in their habitat. And where we're playing, I think this is a desert biome, it's too hot for them. So I had to put in some coolers, but I didn't realize the coolers were set to zero degrees. So every time they were out of the, uh, the cooling radius, it was too hot for them. And when they were right in the middle of it, it was too cold for them, so I had to adjust that. I think I, I don't know if I do that on camera or not, but, oh, here we go, I'm doing it now. Um, but yeah, that was, uh, that, that had me baffled for a little bit. I was a bit confused by that. <laughs> um, so yeah, putting in a bit of terrain paint here. I think the terrain paint is really, really cool. I've never played on this sort of Australian outback desert biome before. Um, so all of the colors are a little bit different i love the rock textures though that you can paint onto the ground i think that turns out really really cool and you can see when i put all of the um all the rocks in i think it turns out really really nicely as well this is their little shelter they do like a little bit of hard shelter and i didn't i was gonna I really go for like a little cabin um sort of knock a hole in the middle of it and let them uh let them sort of sleep in there but i decided to go for something a little bit more like i don't know get mainstream i guess um, I put in some cor corrugated panels on the inside just to make it sort of look like they could rub against it or bump against it and it would be alright sort of thing. Um, but yeah, overall, quite pleased with this. The terrain painting is going alright. I had to do... Oh, here we go. This is where I'm checking out the temperatures and readjusting everything. Um, yeah, this is quite... Like I said, this has me confused for a little while. I was a bit un unsure as to why they were constantly had low welfare. Um, but yeah, the little, um, I don't know what you want to call this little shelter. It's actually turned out quite nice. I like the little emu cutout on the side there as well. Uh, emu cutout? Um, <laughs> um, the cassowary cutout on the side. I was just admiring them there. I think they were mating then. Um, they were doing like a little dance around each other. I thought it was quite cool. 
So I'm just looking at what sort of plants to put in and the rock work. So along this edge where the sort of hill is, I wanted it to be quite rocky, uh, where it's quite close to the water as well. I wanted this whole side to be full of rocks and stuff. Oh, there you go, there's a little baby. There were two babies as well. I was only expecting to get one, but two babies is, uh, it was pretty cool. Um, but yeah, this side I want to be all rocky and stuff. So I had these big boulders that I was squeezing in and thankfully the birds can't sort of jump up on these rocks and climb out and stuff because these rocks don't look overly tall. Um, it does look like they could probably jump out, but thankfully they can't. And I go back and change that barrier to a null barrier as well just to make it all sort of blend in and sort of hide a little bit easier. Uh, there we go, just going on the heat map there to make sure they can't escape, which they can't, which is nice. Thankfully they're not um, birds that can fly. These rainbow eucalyptus trees are gorgeous. The bark on them, I definitely recommend. If you've got the Australian pack, go into the game, put one of these down and look at the bark on them because the bark is amazing. And the um, trunks to them are actually really quite sort of simple looking so you can sort of sink them down into the ground quite nicely to bring them a little bit lower to the ground if you like your foliage a bit lower um, but these trees are massive trees as well you can get them really really high but these rainbow eucalyptus trees are absolutely gorgeous um, so we're putting in a few of these we've put a lot of these in um, but I think these are mainly around like the nooks and crannies around the rocks um, especially on the water's edge here my thinking is I'm pretty sure it's probably dry all the time, but I think it was that because it's near the water, the plants will get a little bit more water to be able to grow and be a bit more green, a little bit more lush. So that was my thinking. I put a few sort of everywhere else in the habitat, just trying to make it look a little bit more realistic, a little bit more lived in. Um, obviously, like gardeners aren't going to be able to keep on top of habitats and all the foliage within them, so I'm trying to keep it quite natural. Putting in these like ferns, I wanted to add like some bush bushiness to it all um, and these ferns sunk into the ground they do a fantastic job with these um, what are these called um, fan fan palms I think um, the ones that came out in the new new pack are really really cool for just giving it like a bit of a tropical edge as well without making it seem too unrealistic or too far-fetched from the uh, from the actual um, biome that we're in like I wanted it to sort of seem somewhat realistic and somewhat natural um, and these foliage clumped together I think does a fairly good job of that so I might use that in a few other habitats uh, but that is it we're going to come to the end of the speed build now so what we'll do we'll jump into a little real time section and we'll have a little walk around um, and just explore it in real time um, and, and take a little closer look at it right then here we are at the entrance of the zoo I've changed the sign as well to say Project Down Under. Um, last time, I, I guess I was just trying it out with uh, the words gift shop and zoo. Uh, but Project Down Under is the official title of this zoo now, so that's on there. It looks good. Uh, it looks pretty cool, though, doesn't it? Uh, also, we got a gift shop and our little uh, ranger's hut behind us. This is the entrance. This is in last or yesterday's video, last episode. Uh, so, we're going to take a little stroll along this path. Um, this path needs completing. On, uh, on both sides. We'll probably do a video at the end of the series just going over a few little detailing bits. So this little uh, riverbank here, uh, the bridge as well, this bridge that is here, I want to do something with that and make that look a little bit uh, cooler I guess. Um, but the rocks down here look pretty cool. I think it looks somewhat natural. Uh, we can maybe put a few rocks in on the other side to make it blend in with the mountain that's over there. Um, but yeah, overall, quite happy with how the uh, the rocks have turned out there. Big path, big open area here. Uh, and we'll go up the steps and across the bridge. There are some plants, these plants, some of these plants do float. Um, the shadowing, I don't know if the shadowing's off on them or something, but um, it's difficult to see how high they are from the ground sometimes. So excuse if you see any of them floating around. Um, but for, I mean, from at the top of the stairs, you can get a pretty good view into the, uh, into their habitat here. Go down a little bit. I love this fence here. I think it just gives off such a such a cool vibe. These are the education boards. Um, you didn't see. I don't think these were in the speed build, but they're pretty simple. I used one of the uh, the corrugated sign 
as the main sort of thing to hold it up and then the um education australian education surround board i guess you could call it uh, and just popped a education uh, screen in the middle of it it turns out quite well i think um, so here we go having the food the two babies and the mum and dad over there We're having the food we go get a little glimpse before they eat it all Um, they're pretty cool, aren't they? Pretty that little hop. You see a little hop the little one did to run to go get their food. Um, so there is a little bit of logic to this habitat. I wanted we get a little bit of height here if you have to see it. This side is obviously where the rocks and stuff are, so there's not a huge amount of foliage, no trees or anything like that. As I wanted this all to be quite rocky, quite open, and then once the trees come, that's when all the foliage starts to come a little bit more as well bit of rock work down here. I was trying to hide the uh, sort of uniformness of it. You can't hide it completely, but you can hide it completely, but I didn't want to. I wanted it to uh, to look a little bit man-made. So yeah, pleased with how that's turned out. A little rocky hill here, no foliage on it. Um, again, just trying to get this to, uh, to be a bit more rocky and I didn't really feel like the foliage on top of it would, uh, would really look too good. But this also acts as a way to hide the keeper's entrance, which I don't think you can see from any part of where the guests can stand. So that's quite nice. Um, but also hides the uh, the shelter a little bit. So you can see the shelter from guest level, but um, I like the idea of it being sort of somewhat hidden so that guests can't like peek through with their cameras and stuff. And, and have a little look at them sleeping and stuff. But yeah, overall, quite pleased with how this has turned out. The staff buildings at the back here, these are all temporary. I do plan on adding some theme in and stuff to them. Um, I don't know whether I want to keep them there or not, but for the time being, it's a temporary little area for them. Look at the rainbow eucalyptus, though. The bark on this is incredible. <laughs> it just looks so, so cool. So, so cool. As always, they've done a smashing job with the foliage. But yeah, this is the habitat for our cassowaries. It's turned out pretty well. It's quite a simple habitat and not a huge amount going on for it, but it's, um, it's turned out a lot better than I expected. The bins in this game, or in this pack rather, are pretty, pretty cool as well. I like them a lot. But yeah really happy with how this habitat has turned out and uh and excited to move on to tomorrow's project i've got a few projects i know how i want this zoo to sort of turn out and look but i don't know in what order i'll do them so i might do the dingoes tomorrow or the kangaroos you'll have to wait and see um, but to stay up to date make sure you hit the subscribe button that way you can stay notified of all of the uploads of planet zoo on the channel uh, and you can also leave a like if you like the video. That noise that makes really bizarre. Uh, yeah, you can also leave a like on the video if you enjoyed it or learn anything new. Um, but that is it from me. Thank you ever so much for watching. And I shall see you all in tomorrow's video.